I'm thinking about taking up rain photography. What do you reckon? Or maybe snow photography? <laughs> Hello, my name's Chris. Welcome to DIY Astro. Today we're looking at a quick test of Sony's first full frame camera, the A7 Mark I. So I didn't have enough time to roll the roof off the observatory, there wasn't enough gaps in the cloud to do that. So I decided to grab my trusty A7 Classic and a very flimsy tripod, I do need to upgrade that. And I just popped outside and thought I'd take some shots from around the sky in the northern hemisphere just to see what's about and also just to check the the quality of the image at different isos and look how the kit lens performed for the camera as well the kit lens is a 28 to 70 mil f3.5 to 5.6 fe kit zoom and we can talk a bit about the characteristics of this setup because it's probably one of the more affordable full frame setups so first of all you can see in this shot here I mean, I'm not going to win any awards for composition or anything, as you can see from the, the rooftops and <laughs> a bit of tree and a little bit of tree poking there. But as you can see, we've got the Orion Nebula here and we're using ISO 3200 at 28 mils. Now, because I was on a static tripod, I had to use something called the 300 rule, which is a way of working out how long you can take an exposure for of the stars from a fixed position without a tracking mount. So for example, at 28 mils, that's roughly 30 mils, 300 divided by 30 equals 10. So I could do a 10 second exposure without the stars trailing too much. I stopped down the lens to f4 because I don't think anyone shoots with lenses wide open, not even with really expensive prime lenses. They're always a bit better stopped down. So I thought it'd be realistic to stop it down a tiny bit. So I've stopped it down from f3.5 to f4, open at 28 millimeters for this shot. Now I did take a bunch of different ISOs just so we could look at the noise. So for example, this is 3200 ISO. So if I just zoom in, we can see not only are the stars just very, very slightly eggy because the 300 rule is just kind of a, a rough guide. And also there was probably a little bit of camera shake because I was using a two second delay with the shutter rather than a remote shutter release because I don't have a shutter release for that camera. So, the, you know, these aren't going to be perfect images, but as we can see, there's quite a lot of noise. This bit here in the Sword of Orion, that centre bit there is the Orion Nebula, which is pretty cool and so that's a bit too noisy so if you were buying this camera i wouldn't recommend that you shoot at iso 3200 this is um sony's edge viewer i thought i'd try out sony's edge viewer as i was using doing a test with the sony camera uh but yeah when you double click on a picture like so it will go into the editor the photo editor where you can do some stretching and all sorts of stuff as we can see from this picture there's quite a lot of what we call vignetting to the picture. So it's brighter in the middle and darker at the outside. It's kind of like that old school, early film look where it's very bright in the middle and very dark at the edges. So that's vignetting. So there is quite strong vignetting with the kit lens at 28 millimeters. I did think it was perhaps the, the hood, but I removed that and the vignetting remained. So it's definitely a characteristic of the lens and not the lens hood that I used. So let's have a look back at some other ISO. So this is this is ISO 1600 at 28 mils, a 10 second exposure at f4. Here we can see the histogram, it's quite close to the left side, so slightly black clipping at the edge there. So it's quite a dark image. So 1600, let's have a little zoom in and have a look, see how that's looking. It's kind of acceptable really for me. I mean, considering the age of the camera, I don't think that's bad for ISO 1600 for a 10 second exposure at all. You can still see a glimpse of the Orion Nebula there. And there's, these are the belt stars of Orion. And if we go up somewhere, should be able to see Betelgeuse or Betelgeist, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. So that's uh, a pulsating variable star, sort of nearing the end of its life. It's about 500 light years away. So, I mean, it could have gone supernova by now, and we wouldn't know about it for 500 years. But anyway, I'm digressing. 
And yeah, anyway, let's have, let's have a look at these stars while we're on the subject of Orion. So what are these stars here then? We've got Al Alnitak is that one there. That one's called Al Alnilan. They've all got names I can barely pronounce. And that's uh, Mintarka there. And what else we got around here? Sirius should be at the bottom here somewhere. Where are we, where's Sirius? Is that Sirius? I thought Sirius would be a bit brighter than that. I'm digressing. So let's have a look at ice. That's a JPEG. Let's have a look at the. This is the raw file. So the difference between a JPEG and a raw is the JPEG's kind of like a a more compressed, smaller file. So you, you're not going to get as much dynamic range in your image as you would with a raw file. The raw file contains a lot more information. So that's how the raw looks at ISO 1600. And that's how the JPEG looks at ISO 1600 without any kind of intervention. This is just straight out of camera. Let's go down to ISO 800. So that's a JPEG at ISO 800. I'm finding it quite in interesting how the, the color shift, how there's kind of a color shift occurring with different ISOs. So here, that's the Aurora 800. If we look at the histogram, the, the color channels aren't perfectly aligned. The, um, the red is kind of shifted to the right. I mean, the whole thing's slightly clipped to the left side of the histogram. So it's black, what we call black clipped. Um, but we can see the channels aren't properly aligned. But if we compare that to ISO 1600, we can see that those channels are lovely and aligned. So yeah, I think it's interesting to note that there's a bit of a color shift with ISO. Uh, right, so I did take some pictures of other parts of the sky as well, so let me try and dig out some other bits of the sky. ISO 200 is basically too dark to see what's going on, so we'll, we'll fast forward that. Um, so, oh, where are we here? That looks like Cassie Appear, doesn't it? These are stars with also very bizarre names as well, like, um, what are they called? Um, that one there is called... Rookbab, <laughs> it's a strange name. It's, no, that one's called Rook, Rookbab. That one's called Navi. That one's called Seda. Yeah, that's Seda, and that one's called Calf. Not short for Kaffee or anything like that. But down here should be Andromeda Galaxy in the constellation of Andromeda. So this is a constellation of Cassiopeia. Down here is Andromeda. So I'm sure when we go a bit more zoomed, oh, yep, yeah, not zoomed in help. Um, I'm sure when we go up the ISO to 3200 we can see here that that's uh, Andromeda. So let's have a little zoom in on that and see. Ignore the state of this image, it's terrible. But ho hopefully we can see a little smudge. Cool. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So what we're looking at there is light from 2.5 million years ago from our neighbouring galaxy which is supposed to be on a collision course for, with our galaxy but not for something like 4 or 5 billion years so I don't think we need to worry about it too much. I mean all this stuff here where it's kind of like a an oval is made out of a giant city of stars that are not in our galaxy which is quite incredible and we've just seen that on a 10 second exposure on a old full frame camera. But this is a very noisy image at 3200 ISO, so not great. Anyway, let's have a look at 1600. You can still just about make out that it's a galaxy. The core's a bit more smudgy than the other stars. And you can just about see it on ISO 800. I did test the lens at 70 mils at the other end of its throw. Um, here we're at 70 millimeters. That's ISO 6400. You can see what the noise looks like there. Too noisy, I think. And let's go down to 3200. That one's got quite a red color cast on on it. So let's zoom in, have a look at that one. Still very a lot of red noise there. Stars look terrible. I think that's a bit of camera shake. You can see yeah, it's got a slight double image the stars that's because my tripod's really flimsy and I probably should have chose a longer shutter delay than two seconds and that probably didn't help at all and let's go down to 1600 zoom in on that one the noise looks a lot better there but again we've got a bit of trailing um, I think that's either camera shake but it could be coma 
I don't know. So I'll, it might be difficult to judge the coma if we've got a bit of camera shake, to be honest. So probably best not have too much judgment on the coma of the lens at the moment. So I can sort that out. Uh, what's this one? This is 1600. And that is Taurus and the Pleiades. Bit of red colour shift on the histogram. We're right to the left of the histogram. That's a JPEG. We'll look at the 32 ISO 3200 version. More red shift of the histogram. And 6400 looks much better. The, the uh, histogram's nicely lined up, all the colours are lined up. But I'm fairly sure that's going to be quite noisy. Yeah, it's very noisy. Still some vignetting at 70 millimeters. Anyway, that's um, that's a quick play around with Sony's Edge Viewer and the Sony A7 Classic on a tripod, pointing it at the sky in a very brief window of time when there was no clouds. Uh, hopefully. That was at least interesting in some way, whether you wanted to have a look around the Northern Hemisphere sky in February or whether you're interested in the Sony A7 Classic. So until next time, take care, remember to tell those clouds to sod off, consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.